Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever your time zone is. We are sitting down with the amazing Megan <laughs> from Butterfly Events. Well, Hello. But, but maybe not because <laughs> the plan is, right? There's a plan. There is a plan. You're thinking about selling your business. I am. And even before COVID, like way, 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 you know, in, in the bright ages before we went into the dark times, there were a lot of people that would contact me and ask me, Scott, what do I do or what do I have to do or what's a good plan and how do I sell my business? Sure. And, and Megan posted in one of my groups of Ent Ensemble that she was interested in selling her business. And I said, let's chat. And then she was nice yep. enough to let me record it. And there you are. So butterfly events, what do you do? So uh, we do linen and decor rental. So tablecloths, chair covers, backdrops, ceiling drapes, um, large marquee letters. We do centerpieces. We do napkins. So pretty much anything to do with fabric and events. Um, we do it. We come and we decorate and we make it to what the client wants. And I don't ever push anything that they don't want or need because every venues are different and every wedding is different so and every event is different so we just we made sure to customize everything towards what they wanted and we made it happen um but we're ready to move on um we i my husband and i had a son uh he's almost a year old so um it honestly hasn't been anything to do with Corona. Um, if anything, Corona kind of made me realize how little I was home um, and how little I actually had time to spend with my newborn. <laughs> so it's, this had uh, nothing to do with the amount of beer you drank? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, 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 you mean coronavirus. coronavirus? Okay, all right, all right, yes. all right, I got you. <laughs> uh, so, so. so I'm curious because this is, you know, about selling the business. Clients will say, I need a yellow or I need a blue or I need pink or whatever that pink, see? Um, whatever it is that they need. And then do you then keep it and you have it warehouse for the next time or do you mm -hmm. rent? from someone else, third party, then set it up for the client and then return it to the rental company or you are that rental company? We are the rental company. So um, uh, kind of one of our, or one of my mantras, I guess, of something that I always said was, um, if I don't have it, I'll get it. And as long as, long as it, I think it can be used again. Um, so that was... so that fuchsia thing you're never going to use again. We're not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a lot of colors that probably won't get used in a long time. But um, as long as it was like, um, I guess the the size. And so I guess I stuck to like the sizes that were pretty consistent. And so if it was like a super odd size, that's probably something that I would um, not do. But um, for the most part, we, we made everything, we made it happen. So we, we don't rent really from other companies, um, maybe like on the very off chance, um, but for 99% of our business, we, we had it made if we, especially if we had time, if we had time to get it made, we would. Okay. So I was chatting with another company recently about the same question that they wanted to sell their business. They have a huge warehouse that is, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, somebody's garage or the back right. room um, or right. even a storage facility. I'm talking about, they have a full on warehouse and right. it is from floor to ceiling packed with right. all kinds of stuff and without giving away who it was. Um, <laughs> so their position is that they have all this stuff, plus they have the business. Right. Your plan, is it, you have this stuff at home, you have it in a storage facility, it's in the garage. I'm, I'm not passing judgment, but it tells me how much stuff you have. Sure. Um, so we have about 800 square feet of storage space in a facility and then i have 
the garage full and I have a shed in the backyard. So ah, well, don't take me um, out to the shed. <laughs> <laughs> I could turn you around I'm <laughs> in the backyard. But <laughs> OK, um, so you do have so a lot of stuff. I do have a lot of stuff. Um, the good thing about linen is it's pretty consistent in the way you store it. So mm -hmm. I have um, 21 racks of hanging linen. Um, so, and they're- And I'm assuming tall. it's all pressed and cleaned and ready to go out the door for the next event. Correct. Okay, perfect. Now, when people talk about selling their business, sometimes they talk about selling the stuff or they talk about selling their customer list or they talk about selling the business, which includes the stuff, the list and so forth. Um, sure. Do you have a preference between one, two or three? Um, ideally, I'd love to sell it all together. Um, that's my starting goal. Um, I I do have clients that I work with and venues that I work with. Um, I do have stuff on the books. Um, I'm not going to just leave them high and dry by any means. So we will make sure that who we find will work for mm -hmm. us and for them. Um, and if it's just kind of depends on how long it takes, honestly, I'm not, we're not in a, we need to sell it right this second. It's, we're, um, in, we're in a good position. Honestly, we still had, we still have, uh, money in the bank. We still have, like, it's not a, oh my God, we need to, it's not a fire sale. It's a, right. um, I'm ready to move on to the next chapter in my life, but I'm not, uh, it's not a fire alarm. So excellent. Um, this is good news. It means yeah. that you want to sell, but you're going right. to going to continue to service your existing customers. Absolutely. You're, conti you're continuing to schedule future events, even Absolutely. though you know that at some point you're going to sell the business and that right. actually makes the business more viable. Right. Because right. The, a lot of times people say, well, I'm done with this thing. And, I, you know, it's like it's not that it's not making money, but I'm done with it. So they don't want to do it anymore. Right. And, right. and then they stop. And right. the moment that they stop, the business becomes less and less valuable. Absolutely. So the fact that you're still in process, again, mm -hmm. maintains the value of what you're doing. And you say right. that you have current customers. So I'm assuming right. that you have some list or whether it's a database or a spreadsheet or do you have a CRM, some kind of a client relation management uh, system? I don't have a, an official program that I use, no. Um, I just, I've kind of always just done it on my own. <laughs> so okay. um, I, I'm, it, I'm not a huge company. It was just me and my husband that ran it. And, um, but I mean, that was, it was something that we were considering um, and to getting, and I just, I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> uh, it's as you know, it's a lot of a lot of things go into running a business, and uh, uh, there I just kind of always got put back to the back burner. Honestly, <laughs> I understand. Do, so. Don't feel alone. It, it's the situation <laughs> for many mom and pop shops, and that's not a that's not a disparaging term. It's just the difference between you know Macy's versus right. you know the shop on the corner and there's pros right. and cons for each. Sure. So now let's talk about who might be a potential buyer. First, someone who's already in the business may want to purchase your stuff, your sure. linens, your sure. centerpieces, all that stuff, and they'll want to purchase your relationship with your businesses. So sure. that, sure. It, and that would probably be the end of butterfly because they would just right. buy it and put it under their umbrella. Right. That, that price point is probably going to be wholesale because it's somebody who's already in the business. They know the value right. of something that right. that's already been used, if you will. And sure. Lennon is designed to be used, cleaned and used again. Right. But again, they still view it as used. Right. Whereas a person who wants to get into this kind of a business, they will see a greater value in right. what you offer um, and they would want to move in. Something right. that you can do that would sweeten the, the business pie, if you will, 
is if you offer to stay on as an advisor for a certain period of time so that there's a smooth segue transition between you and them as the new owners. And so it's right. you and them together, and then they then you know ultimately take it over. Um, possibly with um, some arrangement that if, again, a financial arrangement where they say, we're gonna give you X to buy the business, and we'll give you so much now, and then you're gonna help us with the transition, and then at the end of the transition, we'll pay you the other piece of the puzzle, okay? Right. If they don't pay you the other piece of the puzzle, you still own the business. Okay. Okay, so again, these they're just different variations upon the theme for people. There was a friend of mine whose name I will not mention, but he sold his DJ business. He had multiple DJs, multiple sets of equipment. He had a full uh, CRM, everything. I mean, he was a business. Not that you're not, but he was really, really a big business. And he sold it to somebody, and that somebody was supposed to allow him, the previous owner, to coach him. And the new owner said, "Yeah, I don't need that. Hmm. Sure enough, the business is no longer around. Sure. And you can share that biz, uh, story with anybody who's interested in the business, knowing that that transition time is the time that they get to learn on job what is required to do the business. Sure. Um, it's a win, win, win. Right. Go, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. So, it sounds like you want to uh, add to this. That's a, exactly kind of what we kind of want to do, um, just because – I know everyone has their standards, and uh, but I, I have clients that expect certain things from mm -hmm. us, and I want to make sure that they're being taken care, care of. Because that, that's honestly, that was the hardest decision for me, was um, all our friendships and clients and relationships that I've built and cultivated over the last couple of years. Um, that was the hardest part for me to, to leave, because... Mm -hmm. They're, they're my friends. They're, they're what, if, what made it fun for me. So um, I just want to make sure that everyone's taken care of. And we do kind of, I mean, a lot of people do pipe and drape. Don't get me wrong. But like, that's something that we kind of um, really took a lot of pride in. And, and our linen too, our um, quality of it and standards. Um, but the pipe and drape was something that is not something that a lot of a lot of people just think that oh you just throw it up there but there's a lot that goes into it and um, a lot of finesse and not everyone gets it not everyone get, understands how to tie a bow. You can buy <laughs> so. a paintbrush and some paint. It does not Absolutely. make you a painter. Absolutely. And you can have <laughs> the equipment that's necessary for pipe and drape and you can hang a pipe and you mm -hmm. can hang a drape it's not the same as decorating right and and that is the distinction there are lots of pipe and drape companies but right. not all of them decorate and so right. i understand where you're coming from um so you're looking for somebody who's creative for sure yes but you may know a lot of people but you may not necessarily know a lot of people who want to buy a business. Sure. Have you spoke to a business broker? I haven't yet. Um, honestly, I had kind of started to spread the word a little bit through um, my close network. And then I made the post on Event Ensemble. Um, and I kind of wanted to see how that got me because um, I would kind of not feel more comfortable, but um, people that are in event ensemble already know the business mm -hmm. and know what it entails and know the demands of the event industry. So I kind of wanted to start there. Um, it's definitely something that we are open to. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you want to keep it in the family. I, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um. I've already asked my parents, and they're like, we will help you any way we need to, but we won't buy the business. <laughs> right. um, I know, Mom. <laughs> and, and that's something that you need to take into consideration. Um, my, my business coach, he always asks me, Scott, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? 
you know, you got you got a balance between those two. Sure. And so now the question is, do you want to sell the business and make a profit? Or do you want to sell the business knowing that it's in good hands? Because they are sometimes exclusive to one another. Right. Uh, right. You might be able to find both, but not necessarily. Right. And a right. business broker is going to find somebody who's probably going to pay more for the business, but not necessarily have your passion or even sure. your design expertise. They might sure. bring somebody on board, but they're more, they're just about right. the business, if you will. Right. Um, and those are things that you have to weigh in terms of what you want to do with the business. Absolutely. Um, go ahead. We're, we're still just trying to, we, we just got, um, we haven't just decided on selling the business, but um, we just started looking, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not in a huge hurry to like, it doesn't have to go today. So it, um, I, I want to try and find, first I want to kind of try and find, I don't know. I just want to find the right fit as okay. of right now. <laughs> so it sounds like it's more important about the right buyer versus the right price. At, at this particular moment. <laughs> at this moment. Okay. So let me give you a little glimmer into my crystal ball. If, okay. If you will. Um, if you had wanted to sell your business in April, May, June, July of 2020, right. nobody, nobody's interested. If you want to sell your business in January, February, March of 21, maybe. Right. But I suspect if you hang on September, October, November, you'll, you'll get um, more bang for your buck. Right. Simply because... The further we They're get back. shots in the arm and a little bit further down the line here, then yep. events are going to return and the value of what you have hanging on the rack, which by the way, is a huge advantage because a dress, <laughs> uh, seriously, a dress hanging on the rack decreases in value exponentially because sure. the style and the color and everything is changing. Absolutely. The linens, it doesn't change. Listen, white tablecloth and black tablecloth, that is right. not changing. <laughs> Okay. Right. Uh, now the lime green, that's another story, but the, the other cyclical. colors, you're okay. Right. <laughs> it is. Listen, whoever thought peach would come back. So, right. you know, there you yep. go. Um, that's something to keep in mind about as you approach the sale of your business. Right. Okay. It sounds like I haven't told you anything you don't already know, <laughs> which is really, okay. really sad because I was hoping to be like the expert, <laughs> but do you have any questions? Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, do you recommend a lawyer or for sales? Do you recommend them people having a lawyer? I highly, highly recommend that you have a lawyer, even, even if you have a business broker, because the business broker's um, primary concern is the business broker. Sure. And the other party who's purchasing your business may have an attorney. And guess who his client is? The person client. buying. You <laughs> right. each need to have your own attorney. Um, a good business attorney is going to read through the agreement as to what are your responsibilities and what are their responsibilities as the buyer, what happens if things fall through, and, and, what, and so forth and so on. Um, what okay. you want to make sure, though, because I know you want to protect your clients and the quality of the product and service that you provided – but at the same time, right. you don't want them coming back to you after you've sold the business and right. saying, well, you sold the business and it was on the calendar when you were in and you're responsible. That's right. a problem. So, right. yes, you should absolutely have an attorney. Okay. Why didn't I think of that? Um, and if you have one, <laughs> I would love one. <laughs> I do. do you, are you looking for a recommendation for an attorney? Um, yeah, if you have one. Okay. Well, I just happen to have one right here in my pocket. So um, <laughs> I'll, I'll introduce you to the attorney I have in mind. Okay, perfect. Any other um, questions? That was that was our main one. We uh, and we had kind of been on the fence if we needed one. Um, when I purchased the business six years ago, I did not have one. And did you purchase Butterfly from someone? I did. And I was did. it was it called Butterfly at the time? It was. Ah. So um, she actually had done it for like 16 years and grown her inventory, but she was she was done. She um, 
she went into real estate and was just ready for a change, kind of like I am. But um, kids will do that. <laughs> she so her kids were grown, and she just was. She wanted her so, weekends. But yeah, back. she was in a different place. But your place, yes. it's yes. it's it's a good place. Yes. Let me, if I may. I did not know that you purchased the business from somebody who had the same company and the same name yes. 16 years prior. It is yes. extremely important that that piece of information be at the top of the buying information about your company okay. so that they don't think that you had it for three, four, five, six, whatever the number of years are, um, and now you're selling it, and it's only that old. It actually okay. has – sounds like 20-year-plus history, and that mm -hmm. is huge in terms of yeah. value um, for um, longevity to the business and, and that, again, feather in your okay. hat. <laughs> um, so I had, when I took it on, I definitely took the stance of growth because she hadn't really grown it a whole lot. Um, I mean, she did, but she had, she, she didn't want to grow it very much, <laughs> I guess. So um, everybody runs a business differently absolutely. and for different reasons. Absolutely. You know, whether it's primary or secondary income, if it's a hobby or if it's, sure. it's you know, it's a craft or right. is it a business? And, right. And, and you're in the middle, by the way, because you've right. obviously <laughs> been profitable with this and it's working right. and it's growing. And now you want to take advantage of the fact that you've grown the business and you want to offer it and sell it to somebody. Right. Perfect. All right. So. Um, other than, uh, so I guess I, I kind of think I have an idea, but, um, you, the thing is right now I'm trying to go through and like figure out what I don't want to go with the business. That's okay. Right. <laughs> I um, don't have to sell. In other words, you want to keep some of it. Um, just like equipment, I guess. Like I bought this 15 foot tall ladder that. I kind of want to keep. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't have to sell that <laughs> with it because it's. So if you've ever heaven. been to an estate sale, an estate sale, they have an auction company that comes in and they put tags on everything that's going to be sold, and then the sure. the owner says, "No, no, no, not the sofa. I'm keeping that blue sofa. That's right. mine. But but everything else. Oh wait, no, not not that. And and that's <laughs> what they'll do. They'll go through right. the, with you the business. And they'll ask, what do you want to keep and, what, and what's going to be for sale, what's included and what's not. And that will be on an itemized list. And that's part of the process that the attorney will help walk you through so okay. that you can protect what you want to keep. And right. get, I don't want to say get rid of, but sell. Right. What, what, sure. um, but I will tell you once again, weigh the value of things. Right. In other words – what how much more would this business be worth if this thing was included versus right. what is it going to cost me to go buy a new one right uh, you mentioned ladder and so i'll just use it as an example i mean <laughs> I if, if you are in love with that ladder great but if it <laughs> but if it bumps the business value by 200 and you can buy a new one for 50 that's a no-brainer sure so sure. keep that in mind as to what you want to keep or not keep. And I'm only using the ladder as an example because you mentioned right. ladder. And because I know nothing about linens other than what they hang on. The rack. It's a, I don't know why. I, I, I really like this ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's no reason. <laughs> okay. People do fall in love with the things they fall in love with, and there um, does not have to be a reason. So there, I'm like, There's not a whole lot that I'm like, oh, my God, I need to keep this. Um, from it because I, it's just not where I'm at in my life. I'm most, I'm, yeah, because of quarantine and whatnot, I'm like, oh, let's get rid of everything in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, there's, we got too much. We got a lot of baby stuff too. So <laughs> that's, that's another get rid of that business. You can't sell. <laughs> yes. No, I don't want to. <laughs> so, well, Megan, Thank you so much for sitting down with us to talk about selling a business. I Absolutely. know this information will, will be helpful to those who are looking to sell their piece of the uh, business pie. Absolutely.